Sam Smyers here. Today, I wanna to talk about parallel processing and how to use it. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. All right, everyone. So you've probably heard about parallel processing or especially parallel compression. And I just wanted to go over this concept to make sure that you fully understand how to use it. When we talk about processing, there are two types that we need to know. We have serial processing, and then we have parallel processing. Looking at this diagram, we have drums going into a compressor, and then that is going to our output. And this is serial processing, where you have only one object processed at a time. This would be an example if I have drums and then I put a compressor on that drum track, and then I listen to what that compressor is doing to those drums. Let me just show you and I'll open up an Ableton session and we can take a look. Here I have a drum loop. And I could go to my effects, put on a compressor, what was that? And now I have a compressor that is compressing the drums and this is serial processing. This compressor is put on the drums as an insert whenever you put all of these inserts in a row. Let's say I follow up this compressor with an EQ and then I make some adjustments to this EQ. So we have the sound from the drums going into the compressor and then going into the EQ, and that is then going to our output, and that is just serial processing. If we take a look at this diagram again, next we have drums into the compressor, into the EQ, into the output. That is just another example. So what is parallel processing? Parallel processing is going to mean that various objects can be processed simultaneously. Think about two parallel lines. Here in this diagram, I have the drums going to the output, but then I'm also taking part of the signal from the drums, sending them to a compressor, and then feeding that to the output. So I'm combining the original signal from the drums, and then also the signal from the drums with the compressor on it. And then I'm blending those together to feed into the output. Let me go ahead and show you an example of that. On my drum track, I have a compressor, and with any plugin and most plugins, you will find a dry and wet knob. And this is essentially what happens whenever I turn down my dry and wet knob to anything below 100%. I am now feeding part of the dry signal from those drums into the output. What I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and adjust the settings on this compressor to make them pretty heavy. Now I will lower the dry and wet knob. In this instance, that would be parallel compression because I have this compressor running in parallel. A lot of times you will hear about parallel compression on drums, and this is essentially what you would do. You would hit that compressor really hard. As you can see on this compressor in this example, I have this ratio relatively high. I have a fast attack, fast release. And then I have this threshold that is adding a lot of compression to those drums. Basically with compression, you get this really compressed in your face effect. However, with drums, you tend to reduce the dynamics or the punch of drums. And a way to get around this is you can do parallel compression because you are blending in this super compressed signal underneath the original signal. And that allows you to keep some of the punch while also giving that effect from the compressor. Another way that we could do this is I could right click on this compressor. I could go to group and group allows me to create these chains. I could create a clean chain, which is the original drum signal with nothing on it. And then I could have this be my parallel compression chain. Then I'll turn up this dry and wet knob all the way up to 100, turn this down, and then I'll blend it in. just like that. Real quick, before I continue, if you have made it this far, then please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos that are just like this. Now back to the video. What I could also do is on my parallel compression chain, I could put this EQ, duplicate it, and then I can adjust some of the settings of 
just this parallel chain. And now I just have my compressor and the EQ on a parallel chain. Let's solo that. And blend that in. You may also hear parallel compression be called New York compression. And that is essentially what I'm doing here. I'm blending in that highly compressed, slightly EQ'd signal in with those original drums. Instead of using a audio effects rack to blend in my parallel compression, I could also duplicate my drum track and then put the compression and EQ on this duplicated drum track like I have done here. And then I can just blend in this new drum track with this original drum track. When you do something like this, be careful with your loudness because obviously you're combining two sounds together and so your volume will also increase and you just have to be careful about not making this super loud. Now going back to this diagram here, I showed you how we use this compressor and used it in parallel. And then I showed you how if I adjusted our dry and wet knob on our compressor on the drum track before an EQ, then we are taking the dry signal from the drums, sending it to an EQ, and then taking the drums, sending it through the compressor, and then sending that through the EQ. And then I showed you how I could take this second chain with the compressor, add an EQ, and then feed that through the EQ here, and then send it to our output, and then take the signal from the drums, that dry signal, send that through to the EQ, and then to the output. There are so many other ways that you are probably using parallel processing without realizing it. For example, if you put your reverb on your track and then adjust the dry and wet, that is essentially parallel processing. Another way that I like to use parallel processing is with saturation, because instead of putting it onto your track and dirtying up the entire signal, I can just take a parallel signal and then blend in that dirtied up saturated signal to give some warmth to that original track or that instrument. Let's go ahead and put on a saturator to my duplicate drum track. Let's solo it. Get some real nice crunch. And let's blend it into our original drum track. And that is just another way that I can use parallel processing with saturation. Anyway, I just wanted to go over that to make sure that you understood the difference between serial processing and parallel processing. I hope that helped you understand the difference. And if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos that are just like this. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.